Hey guys, and welcome to Slash Rex Games. In our last networking tutorial, I showed you how to port forward and enable your game to be visible across the entire internet. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to send a custom message to the server, and the server is going to send that message to every single client, and it's going to tell all the other clients that you've done something. So to start this off, I'm going to send a string. The string is going to be read by the server, and the other players will see the string above the player that sent it. It's going to be pretty interesting. So, first to start this off, we're going to go into the client. This is the client on the right and the server on the left hand side. Going into the client we're going to go into the local player. So this is the player that the person playing the game has control of. So we're going to add an event here. Just a simple key press. I'm going to go for an enter key right over there. We're going to add some code right in here. Now firstly to start this off we need to do a few things. We need to clear the buffer then we need to write our tag. This is our uint8 uh, variable. It's going to be our little tag telling the server exactly what this message is for. Then we're going to write a uint32, which is going to have the player ID of the player, this local player that sends it. Then we're going to have the string. We're going to write the string to the buffer. That's the message we're sending. And finally, we're going to write the message to the socket. Now remember that the socket is held by object controller. So when we want to send something through the socket, we need to reference it as object controller's socket. All right, so let's start this off. Firstly, we are going to say h buffer clear like that, and it's the global dot buffer that we are clearing. All right, so now that our global buffer is clear, we can start sending things, well, appending them to the buffer to be sent. So next, h buffer, and we are going to write that uint eight. And we're going to append that to the global buffer. And what we're going to write? Well, if we go into the server side object player, we're going to have a look over here what available numbers we have. So we start at 1, obviously, and we've got it all the way up to 2. So we could do anything from 3 onward. Let's go to this control over here, see what we've used already. We've used 1 and 2, 3 and 4. So I'm going to go to number 5. So we're going to send. Um, tag 5 to the server. So it's going to pick it up tag 5. It's going to interpret all the data it's getting from the buffer and then it's going to send a tag 5 back to here and this is going to be read by all the remote players and it's going to display that little title at the top of the player depending on what we are sending. Now I find it's always good that if you send a tag of 5 to the server have the server respond with that same tag. So here we'll have a case statement of a 5 such like that and then a break and then it'll do stuff and then in here it'll send its own tag of 5 back to the client. It's just so that we know that this uh, when we are sending and receiving a message that message in particular has a uh, has the same tagline just so that we know exactly what that message is for. Keep everything very standard because as we add case statements to this this could go up for you know as many case numbers as we need and it could get very complicated so that'll simplify things a little bit so let's accept all those. So we're sending a 5. Now we've got to say, well, what are we going to send? So the next thing we're going to add here is the player ID, this uh, object local player's player ID. This is just so that when we receive a message from the server, the server can forward that player ID to all the clients, and then the clients will know exactly which remote player we need to alter or change. So here we're going to have 8 buffer, H buffer right. We can copy that. Instead of uint8, I'm going to go for uint32. gives us more space. I mean, you can have thousands of players on your server, so make sure that whatever data type you use enables you to have as many players as you possibly want, so that if you do, in future, decide to go big, uh, you won't have to change all your code. So here we got this, and we add global buffer again, and then here we say player ID. So this is the player ID that the player gets. If you go into object controller, time use players ID, here we go. This is where we're getting our player ID. So we make sure that we're sending our player ID up over here. We've got we're sending a tag of five, we're sending our player ID. Then we're gonna send our message. So we can copy that. Right, I'm gonna say string. Now string does use a lot of space, but when you've got to send strings, you gotta send strings, there's no way around that. Again, go buffer our buffer. Our string is going to be Hello world. Like that. And once that's done, we end it off by saying socket. Uh, socket. Yeah, let's see, write message. That one. Where do we want to write it? Now remember, we don't just say socket as we've done in the object controller. Because this socket variable 
is local to object controller. So we're going to reference it as object controller dot socket, just like that. What are we writing? We are writing the global dot buffer. There we go. So that's pretty much as simple as it is to send a message to the server. We're just clearing the buffer, we're writing our first tag. Don't forget to write your tag first. Then we're writing the information. First it's a UN32, and next it's a string. So we're going to put that on the right hand side over here. We're going to go to the left, into object player, right over here, see the object player. We're going to go into the step event, make that to the side there, all the way down, case 2. Now remember, we created this case 5. That's what this will be read into. See here? First grab the A. We'll be grabbing the uint8, storing it in A. That's this tag. If it's a 5, yeah, it's going to jump to here. As I said in the movement client server explanation, you have to add temporary variables when you receive data. So what we're going to do here is we're going to create two temporary variables. One's going to be called var, then play ready. So we're going to call it pid. The other one's going to be called var, and we can call it message, msg. And here we're going to say, var pid equals h buffer read and we're going to make sure it's the same data type unt32 so this one there and where we're reading it from global dot buffer very simple copy that paste it here and the next thing was message which is a string string just like that now once we've got those we got to now send this off to all the clients because we just uh a messenger, you know, someone's bringing us a message. We're saying, "Thank you for this message. I'm going to notify all the clients of this change." So first, we're going to say h buffer clear. So we can actually copy this. We're clearing the buffer again. Remember, the server also has its buffer. Then we're going to write the uint eight, just like we did in the client. We're writing a five. So we're writing h buffer write uint eight. Global the buffer and five, as we did before. We're going to write these two also to the global buffer, just like this. Then instead of player ID, here we're going to have PID. And over here, instead of a string, we're going to have MSG. So we're just taking what we read and we're sending it off somewhere. So we're appending all, this, all these pieces of data to the buffer. Once that's done, now we need to think, well, we need to maximize efficiency of this game. We need to make sure that if we get a message from a player, we don't want to send that message back to the player. That's redundant. There's no point doing that. So rather, we're going to check that we only send this message to everyone who isn't the person who sent this to the server. So to do that, we simply say with object player. So now this is checking with all object players, including the guy that sent it to us. And here we're going to say if player ID is not equal to other dot player ID just like that then we're going to say socket write message it's pretty much exactly the same as this here this line then in this case we're going to say socket because that's local to object player on this server side and we're writing the global buffer just like that so the client is sending a tag of five is sending his player ID and he's sending the string hello world to the buffer via the object controller socket. Then the server is reading that uh, the UN32 and the string into two temporary variables, PID and MSG. It's clearing its own buffer and it's just sending those along to all the clients. Just like that. So now we're going to go into here, click OK. We mustn't forget to go into remote player and give him a variable here called title. This is just what's going to be displayed above him. Uh, we're going to change this when it receives the message. Okay. Go back into controller, over here, into the step, expand that, scroll down, case 4, we're going to make a case 5 now. So we're keeping it standardized, we've got a case 5 there, and we've got a case 5 here, very simple. Then over here we're going to say, very similar to the way we did it in the server, we're going to grab these two, var pid and var message, we're going to copy those, paste them over here, because we're getting this, remember this 5, it's getting put into A, which is being switched on, which brings us to case 5. Then we're getting this PID and this MSG. So we're getting two temporary variables. Remember, we're getting, making them temporary because controller is going to be handling a lot of variables for all of the different objects. So we want to make sure that these variables are deleted after the step event has run its course. So we've got PID. We're getting in the UN32 that was sent over here. We're getting the MSG, which is the message, which was sent here. 
then we're going to do some stuff with them. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to use this player ID and we're going to cycle through all the remote players and we're only going to put this message on the specific remote player that sent it. Right. So if we play a 2, we're going to see that player 1, our little player 1 remote player, is going to have a message at the top of his head. It's going to be pretty cool. So we say with public remote players, I'll bring that up. Go cycling through all the remote players. We're going to say if server ID, remember remote players get server ID, not player ID. So if server ID equals PID, which is the player ID of the guy who sent it, then title equals MSG. So this is the title of object remote player. Remember, we are now entering a whole different scope here. We're entering the scope of object remote player. Okay. So if the remote player's um, server ID is the same of the player ID. So if we're seeing a guy whose name is Steve, and Steve sends a message, so on our screen we see a little remote player, a little enemy called Steve. It's going to receive the message from the server, so we're going to receive that message. Then it's going to say, well, Steve, the remote player with the player ID that equals whatever it is, and the name of Steve, is going to now display this title above his head. So that's pretty much that. We've got the break statement over there, so that's ending that. So that is pretty much it. Send the message, we're getting it, and we're displaying it. Now, also we need to make sure that object controller, it seems here, oh, no, not that. Delete. The draw event, object controller, over here, uh, this draws all the things. Now, notice here I've got draw text, round x, round y, uh, minus 50, and title. So we're just displaying um, whatever title is, whatever the string and title is here in the object remote player. So when we start off, it's going to say, let's see, remote player. It's going to say blank. Then as soon as we push enter, it's going to go here, local player. We push enter. It's going to send a five. It's going to send our player ID. It's going to send the, the string hello world to uh, the socket. It's going to go all the way to the server. It's going to get read here into two temporary variables, PID and MSG. Then we're going to clear the server zone buffer. We're going to write that same tagline, that same five. We're going to write the PID which we received from the client and the message. And we're going to make sure that we only write it to everyone who didn't send this message. So that's all the other players on the server. So that's writing the five, the PID, and the message back to the clients. Go back to clients, go to controller. The controller handles everything for all the players and remote players. Into the step event, scroll down to tag five. See that? That's tag five. We are sending the PID and the MSG, which is being read here into two temporary variables exactly the same way. Then we're going to go cycle through all the object remote players, find the remote player whose server ID equals PID. And we're going to set the variable title, which is displayed above the player, as the message that we're getting in. So that is exactly it. I'm going to save all this. OK, OK, save, save. I'm going to run some more clients here. Open the server, run the clients. OK. So top right, we've got Steve. Bottom left, we've got Bob. And bottom right, we've got JP. Now when I move JP around, you can see he's moving around on all the screens right over there. If I push enter, it's going to show that over here. It's going to change blank to hello world, and it's going to change this blank to hello world. Enter. See? Hello world. It didn't change Steve, because Steve's server ID is not the same. So it only selected this remote player and set him to hello world. The message is complete. It worked. And we didn't send this message all the way back to me because we know I've sent it, so there's no point in sending it back. So we've saved a little bit of space. And we've made sure that um, all other remote players have no influence on this message at all. So they don't change their state in all, at all. So if we go to Bob, Bob's moving around. You can see he's moving around on both these screens as well as the server. Now if Bob push, uh, pushes Enter right over here, it's going to change to Hello World over here and Hello World over there. So Enter. See? Hello world, hello world. Just like that. And it's the same with Steve. We can just bring Steve down here. Put this one up there. Get Steve again. Where are you, Steve? Not that one. There you are. So here's Steve. Pushes enter. It's going to change this one to hello world. It's going to change that one to hello world. Enter. See? Simple. So that's how you send a message. Now, with this knowledge, you can send anything you'd like to any remote player as long as you have that player ID of the remote player. So if you're doing if you're gonna jump ahead into bullet creation, you can just the player clicks the mouse click, the mouse click sends a message to the server saying, server, create a bullet. Then it's gonna tell that server to tell every single remote player to create a bullet on their client side. And this bullet's gonna belong to whomever created it. It's exciting stuff. We're gonna get to that very, very soon. 
So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Um, it wasn't too long. Pretty straightforward. If you have any questions, pop them down in the description, or you can start a channel discussion if you want. And I hope you found this tutorial educational and helpful. Please feel free to comment, rate, and subscribe. If you're generous, you can buy me a beer sometime. The links are in the description. You can find the studio project file straight in the description. Download it, fiddle around with it if you haven't already, and explore a little. So as always, happy coding, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time for the next part of this awesome HTTP DLL2 networking series. Cheers for now.